Freedom, my friends. The night of the nights has come. The night of the nights. Open your heart and your mind. Move to the rhythm and dance into your own beautiful reality. Feel free and expect the unexpected. Hi guys, this is The Advisor and welcome back to my channel. Most of us by now will have heard that the great lady star is back. And me I'm gonna make it straight, straight and plain. Say, if it is so, welcome back. Welcome back. Lady star, we have never met, but... I really appreciate you as a human being and I think you do deserve to be happy and I would like to say some things which can take you to that place of happiness and of peace and tranquility within yourself that you really need. My dear, what I'm going to say to you, some of it may hurt. Some of it you'll find very alarming. But none of it is Fiction. My dear, I am speaking to you out of love, respect, and appreciation. I'm speaking to you from an angle that I want to see you soar like the bird that you can be. And if I could possibly, if my words can help to be the wind beneath your wings, I would say fly high little dove guys i know that this um this video is not gonna get a lot of views or even if it get a lot of views people are gonna click off pretty early reason being i'm going to be speaking some truth that they don't want to hear now i want to get a lot of views you know, and i hope to make some money from this channel but if me have to tell lie to reach there i'm sorry me will stay poor Thank you very much. We, black people, we love when people lie to we. We just want to hear what we want to hear. And as long as there are people who can feed the lies that we have already in our head, we think they are the best in the world. But I'm not prepared to do that. Me rather dead poor, sorry. I am not about popularity because if a lie most people use to get popularity. And I said that to say this. Would anybody know that I was actually promised a high position in a church? I would have been given a big position in a church if I would come and speak because they realize how eloquently I can speak. They even promised me a good salary. And I turned it down. Why? Me now go go they go lie to people for money. And I refuse to tell people the lie they want to hear. And since right now I'll be saying something which is true, which nobody don't want to hear, them soon gone. But there you go. And it's not that I don't have ambition, you know. I have ambition. But one thing I have also, which is greater than my ambition, is a conscience. And my conscience will not allow me Come on my channel and lie to people to make them like me. Make them like my channel. So, for those who can stomach up the truth, do continue to listen and enjoy. And for those who cannot stomach up the truth, I just say, peace be unto you. Love in the same way. Now, I'm going to get into the fullness of what I need to say. And there is no way I can do that without first going back. To where this all began. This aspect of your Christian journey actually began on the 23rd of November 2015. That was the day when Jordan Phillips, Jacob Ree, crashed her Mercedes Benz into a wall on Barbican Road. She remained in hospital until the 4th of December when they had to pull the plug when she, plugs when she became brain dead. Um, ladies, uh, this hit you hard 
because at the time you were one of those persons who was a mentor and full supporter of this young young lady and you were helping to build her career and you were one of those who had so many plans for her not just you but there were many but you were one of them now on the day when she was being buried which was december 15th of 2015 you along with many many artists attended her funeral you will remember i mean there, 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 there was at that day believe me it was the list of every basical dance hall and entertainment celebrity throughout the island you know there were curvy diva yannick the angel kip rich romaine virgo christopher martin shireen anderson popcorn spice beanie man alien Hatton, and so on so we know it was a big deal i hear and you can correct me here no marianne hall i hear that the pastor was saying that capri is now dead and her soul is not sure to be resting in peace because of how she died and because of the life she was living and that therefore it was up to those who were still alive to take charge of their life and take charge of their soul so that they do not end up in the place where J. Capri was going to end up well hopefully someday you might be able to correct me if that was the sermon that was preached but that's what I heard I hear that at that point, something struck you and you decided out of fear, of course, out of deep-seated fear, to give over to what the pastor was saying. And you therefore decided to give up everything that you had built in the dance hall industry and change and serve the quote-unquote Lord. But, dear heart, you see what happened? Since you're going there, remember saying, you know, the following day, the Monday morning, you go visit Bishop Everton Thomas, and Everton Thomas baptize your same time. You, you did not waste any time. It's like when you went home the night after the funeral, it's like you, you didn't even sleep. It's like you did go sleep, uh, Bishop Everton Thomas, do away. It, you are epiphany was that quick maybe we could say that only Saul who did get hit down on the road to the Damascus did get converted quicker than you but anyway let, let me leave that now ladies uh, you see the problem where you go through as a Christian you know you never have none of them problem there when you were out in the world doing your thing you had fame you had fortune you had respect and most importantly you had the support of everybody within the industry, both locally and in every country on earth that your music played. As soon as you became a Christian, what, what Your world shrunk massively. Your finances shrunk massively. Your fame and fortune, everything took a nosedive instantly. But at the time, you were saying to yourself, well, this is expected to happen because, you know, you have made some those drastic changes. But remember saying, you know, when you were accepted into the Christian fraternity, the first person who tried to broke your foot were Christians. Beginning with some officials in the same church that you got baptized. I won't call no name. Them are the first one to start dig you down for money. In other words, most, as a matter of fact, from what I hear, most of the person within the Christian fraternity did not give you the support that you would have had had you been in dance hall. Most of them were looking for support from you. Even when the dog did bite up um, your um, household help, the dog did bite her up and your case was in court, when you are going to court, are you one? Do not forget, had you been out in the Christian, out in the dance hall fraternity, you know how much people would have turned up a court? Let me tell you something, Marianne. Take, for example, look from Vibes Cartel. Vibes Cartel, an old murderer. And look at the support he gets 
from everybody when he's trying to when he's going to court in his prob with his problems. Girl, these are not prices you have to pay for salvation. Well, first of all, is there even anything such as salvation? Because I know, you know, that you're coming back out into the world, quote-unquote, out into the world. You know, you are going to have a lot of misfeelings. And you're still going to be wondering if you have done the right thing. And your conscience is going to be playing on you for a long time. But I am here to tell you, let not thy conscience be bothered. Because let me tell you something. You see, Christianity, Christianity attracts the lowest of the low, the dumbest of the dumb, the thieves, the hypocrites, the pedophiles, the conmen, the thieves, and all the sexual deviants are them you find in a church. So you do not have to feel any way by coming out of them because I know you are a decent person. Because if there's a God, which I doubt, anywhere you're there, he might go find you. Because personally, I can tell you this, Marianne Hall, if God, if there was a God and him was to come from the world tomorrow morning, me can tell you, say, him going, going to the whorehouse, the ganja den, the crack yard, the ganja den, the casino, and all other areas of the bar tree. And take out more decent people, more clean hearted people, when I'm going to find in the church. So you don't need to feel no way coming out of them. And let's for a moment go back to J. Capri's funeral. You see how big her funeral was? Everybody rallied around her and gave their donations. And made her funeral into one of the best ever happened in this country. Which, which bag of Christian are going to rally around you, sir? There, that not going to happen. If you really want to be around decent people, go back into dance hall. Go around people who had clean like your own. And let me tell you something. Just when these people come and talk to you, Marianne Hall, let me tell you something. The most important thing you can do is to start asking questions. Anybody who come to you with any religion, ask them some questions. Question one, and this is a very profound one. Now, the question is, how many people did the Christian God kill Marianne? You will not be able to answer that. Nor can any Christian on the face of this earth answer that question but i'm going to tell you and this is taken straight from the bible so i know me i tell no lie if any liar tell a god himself i tell lie upon himself between the amount of people that god smited plagued brimstoned struck dead and those he sent in his blood thirsty marauding thugs to kill you know how much this God is responsible for killing Marianne between 47 and 53 million people. Now, this is where a lot of people, believers, are going to leave the channel and probably unfriend me, but so it go. You can't stand the truth. That's just too bad. Between 47 and 53 million people dead. God just responsible for all of those deaths. But here is what, Ma Marianne. There, that number does not include the amount of countless millions that your God supposedly drowned in the flood. In other words, our good, loving, kind, compassionate, protective God killed between 47 and 53 million people and then tapped it off by drowning everybody upon the face of the earth, which are countless more millions, countless. Now, let us contextualize that by asking this other question. How many people did Satan kill? Again, no Christian can answer this. But here is me to answer the question. The total number of people that Satan killed, the Bible tells you, God tells you how much people in all Satan killed in his own existence. 
If you did kill no more and never tell me about it, then fine, I can't blame we. We have to go by what him choose to tell we. But according to God in the Bible, him said Satan killed ten people. Ten dege 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 somebody Satan killed. And guess who these were? These were the seven sons and three daughters of Job. And it was God who tell Satan to kill them. That means Satan did not even kill one somebody after him own. Now, no Christian is going to tell you this. True, me not afraid to talk the truth. I'm not afraid to discuss the Bible. Me I go say it. But that's not even the worst part. The worst part is why were they killed? They were killed over a flipping bet. God begged Satan to listen. I bet you, me I bet you say you can kill them ten somebody there. And Job still I go worship me and still now nah go change in belief from me. So imagine that the loving, kind, understanding, considerate, patient God just kill ten somebody so just for prove a bet or tell Satan to do it. In other words, what I would gather from that is that the wicked, wicked Satan would not have even killed one somebody if him never get coerced and inveigled by the dear, sweet, loving God. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense to anybody listening to this? The few who have the stomach for the truth? Ask any of your former Christian colleagues this. And, and another question. I'm, I'm going to fry your brain now because I'm going to say and ask something. You have to be objective in your reasoning, you know. I'm going to ask you this. Remember baby Saraya Paulwell? She was lured along with her mother up into the hills of Rockfort. And remember that the little baby was being cradled by the gunman who killed her. So you have a God. Listen to me, Mar Marian. You have a God who turn up there and watch and watch an innocent little two-year-old baby get shot and burnt along with her mother and that God turn up there and don't do nothing. You think that is a compassionate God? Is that a, a God worth serving? Don't tell me don't ask. When anybody tell you don't ask, be objective in your reasoning, Marian Hall. Can anything go so? Is that really what a God is supposed to be? And then say you have free will? Think, girl, think, 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 girl. All I'm asking you to do is think. No make nobody tell you say don't think. Marian Hall, the moment you stop thinking, you have handed over your own power to those who are actually in control of you. You can take full control of yourself just by taking control of your own thoughts. People who want to control you are pastors and politicians. Pastors and politicians control you for their own power. Pastors and politicians don't want you to think. Because their power comes from their ability to control you. And they cannot control a thinking person. They cannot control a person who will ask questions. Who reason objectively. Who thinks critically. That's why when you go to church, them call you sheep. Because sheep are the dumbest animal on earth. You can line up 10,000 sheep one by one. And I slit them short. One by one to carry them, we, we, we turn them in a kebab. And each of them is going to walk up and docilely and see what happened to the sheep before. And just walk going at the night. That's why they call the, the church call the, the, the congregants sheep. And that's why it is said that God, God calls you know, the sheep of his pastures. Marian Hall, do not forget that the first thing that the slavers threw upon black people when they took us out of Africa was to throw Christianity away. And the only book that I would allow us to read was the Bible. Do not forget. Because that's how they control black people's minds with religion. Think, Marion, think. If anybody come to you, me or anybody on earth come to you, ask questions. You don't have to ask them questions, you know. 
You are just ask yourself. Once you think critically, quiz questions are going to come into your head. That is if you are a critical thinker. If you are not a critical thinker, then you have a brain which is just like mush. So you can't think anyway. But if you are capable of thinking critically, questions are going to fly into your head. And once you start asking questions, the people who want to control you are going to run. Because they we cannot stand the idea that you are wising up. Another thing not to forget, do not ever forget the amount of love, the amount of adoration that you had gotten from your fans when you were in dance hall. Do not forget the camaraderie. I'm not saying you don't have some time little cuts, cuts go on because that happened even in church. So let's not even go there. Look at the support that you had that dance hall artists have amongst each other. When they fall on hard times, they support each other. You don't find that level as esprit de corps in the church. All you find are people who are suck you out for what they can get. The pastors, the, the other ministers, and whoever. Because, girl, let me tell you something. You want to be among righteous people, stay in dance hall. Because, let me tell you something. If God come from the world tomorrow morning, if there was a God, trust me, he might come upon the dance hall stage and take off more, more people out of the dance hall would end up in heaven more than when at the church. You hear me? Girl, follow your dreams. Live your dreams. Achieve all your hopes, dreams, and inspirations. Surround yourself with beautiful people. You were born for a purpose. And your purpose is in dance hall. Don't feel, let your conscience tell you you belong anywhere else. You know, just co go back home. I'm not a dance hall fan, you know. So I'm not saying it because I'm a dance hall fan. I'm not. I'm a fan of beautiful people. And anywhere that beautiful people occurs, I'm going to support them. So all I can say, Marion, is welcome back. And if you ever need a word of support... Call on me, call on me. I will be there to give you whatever support you need. Fly high, beautiful angel. I wish you well. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, leave a comment below. And I look forward to see you in my next video.